Well, it's still Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. And of course, I will talk about the world of Formula One. We've talked about the world of the US Open and also on the local front, Arena Quadri. And now it's time to delve into basketball. And it's all about the NBA and the playoffs. And right here, I've got Maka Anyang, a basketball expert. She also plays basketball. And uh, I still look forward to having a one on one game with her. Uh, welcome to the show, Maka. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm very well. It's been a long time we <laughs> I saw you. Know. Mm. All right, let's talk about the NBA now. Looking at uh, what happened yesterday, and for MVP Yanis Antetokounmpo, he missed out. He missed most of the game with a sprained injury, sprained sprained right ankle, and the box extended the season to a game five. Now the box topped the Miami Heat one one eight to one one five in game four of the series uh, on Sunday. And at first, it felt like it was going to be a clean sweep for the, the, of the box. And uh, there seems to be a bit of revival for the Milwaukee Bucks? I'm actually surprised mm. um, with him going down that early. I mean, he had 19 points in 11 minutes. So you know he was destined to do some yeah. damage in that game, but unfortunately the injury happened. <laughs> um, but they were able to pull it out in that yeah. overtime game. Middleton really stepped up. Um, he had 36 points and eight rebounds. And then you have some performance from Lopez with 14. Um, I'm happy that they got that win, especially with Giannis going down. I think they played with a different type of fire um, that we didn't see in the first three games. Yeah. So it's 3-1 now. It's unfortunate. I'm, I'm actually really shocked. I mm -hmm. thought the Bucks was going to do better than this, but the yeah. Heat has been playing at a great level. I mean, Bam Adebayo's taking it every night. That game, he had 26 points, 12 rebounds. Butler, you, you can't take out Jimmy. You know, he brings that fire and gets it mm -hmm. done, grabs the boards. So they have a lot of young guys that are really chipping in and, um, you can see they play very well as a unit and as a team, yeah. and they're really just taking it to the Bucks. So mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see. No team has come back from 3-0, exactly. you know. So And Giannis with the ankle sprain, even if he comes back, how healthy is he really mm -hmm. going to be? Is he going to um, have a great impact? Yeah. So uh, this is a hard one. <laughs> very true. But, you know, 3-1 uh, on, on, on the series now, game four, I mean, game five will be kicking off. And uh, do you see any hope for the Bucks coming back against the Miami Heat? <sighs> tough one. It's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, I just don't think they have the pieces. Yeah. Um, Giannis comes out, he performs, and he does well. But And uh, them being a defensive team, yeah. I'm a little disappointed. They're, they're giving up a lot of easy shots, and mm -hmm. they're just not getting it done. They can take care of the ball a lot better as well, some turnovers here and there. Um, I personally, from what I've seen the first four games, I don't think they have what it takes mm. to really win the next few day, few mm. games to to send the Heat home. I, I doubt it. It's unfortunate because you know I'm a Bucks. I exactly. was rooting for the Bucks, <laughs> but uh, the Heat is just mm. overpowering them on all on all around yeah. shooting boards, everything. Mm. All right, let's see how that turns out. If there will be a revival for the Milwaukee Bucks, I just hope for something. I hope for an upset. But if they get to lose game five, and I, I think that will be game over for the Milwaukee Bucks. But I, let's see if they have some fights in them against the Miami Heat. Now, let's do a bit of comparison of players now. I'd like to know who you think is the best duo, LeBron James and Anthony Davis for the Los Angeles Lakers or the Houston Rockets duo of James Harden and Russell Westbrook. I mean, looking at the way these guys play and the game series between these two guys, 1-1 one, one on the board, mm -hmm. two play, four players pulling it off for their teams, LeBron James and Anthony Davis and Harden and uh, Russell Westbrook, all doing perfectly well for their teams. Right. But it's hard to say which of them is the best. So for me, maybe you have a different view on that one. <laughs> who, who do you pick first? Ah, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to go for... Um, James Harden and Russell Westbrook because, because right from time I've never really liked LeBron James. I think he's too forceful on the basketball court and all mm. that. But I just go for Russell and James Harden. Okay. Mm. Um, I don't know. These duos, they're both powerhouses. True. You know, Both duos put up a large amount of points every game. They're very impactful. Um, this is a hard one. I, I personally, I like all of them. I love AD, I love LeBron, I like Westbrook, I like Harden. The only thing that I really see, um, Westbrook and Harden likes to play a lot of isolation basketball. Mm. And that doesn't really go well in the playoffs. Mm. And you see that when they play the, that isolation basketball, a lot of times, a lot of turnovers. In this last game, you know, Westbrook turned the ball over a couple of times trying to do that one-on-one -on -one thing. And that's where it really hurts them. Yes, they do knock down shots yeah. and put up points, but they also 
you know, they need to get more players involved, mm. let the team feel that dynamics. But when you're playing ISO a lot, I believe that's what's hurting them. I mean, they got it done in game one, yeah. but you can see in game two how that isolation basketball really worked against them. And they were down like 20, 20 plus points mm -hmm. in the second half, but they found a way to bring it back, took the lead in the third. Um, and it was a close one to the end, but AD and LeBron got it done. And, and I like how down the stretch they really played together. You can see they played as a, as a unit. I mean, we have MVPs on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to go with the LeBron and Anthony Davis duo. Well, you know, the reason why I would say Russell Westbrook and James Harden, I feel like they play, in as much as you talk about them playing isolation basketball, when you look at the LeBron James side, Los Angeles Lakers, it's easy for you to tell the go-to man, if you can stop LeBron, if you can stop Anthony Davis, then you can shut down the Lakers. Mm -hmm. But it's quite difficult because even if you get to stop Russell Westbrook or James Harden, they know how to toss the ball to their teammates to score the points. So I think it's easier for them. And if you ask me, yes, uh, the game is tied on 1-1. It will go down the wire, but I'm still sticking with the Rockets to portray in this one. <laughs> Do you know what? I, I would like to see the Rockets really battle them to Game 7. Mm -hmm. It's about that time, you know. We see the Rockets, they come into the playoffs, they drop out first round, second round. Mm -hmm. We never really, we haven't seen them in a while make it to like a conference mm -hmm. finals. Final. So it would be really good to see them actually take it to the Lakers. And you know, James Harden, he has a legacy that he's trying to build. And yeah. I think this is a time where he can really prove himself. And he has Westbrook on his side to mm -hmm. really get it done. So I'm... I would like to see this, uh, you know, a really tough battle and yeah. see what they can do um, to give the Lakers a uh, run for, for their money. money. But, but do you think um, James Harden uh, and his side are the underdogs? Have, have they been looked down? Have they been underrated so far in this tournament? I mean, definitely. Mm. Um, they, they've been playing pretty decent basketball, mm -hmm. but I think everyone still worries, can they get it done because of the style of play? Yeah. A lot of people don't believe that the way that they play can bring you a championship. Yeah. So I do see them getting more guys involved, and I think it's good, but they need to just find a way to build that chemistry because when James Harden or Westbrook is off, someone else needs to step up. Step up but yeah. if you're always in the corner waiting for the ball and you're never getting the ball, mm -hmm. you're n it's harder to be ready when sure. that opportunity comes. So they just need to share the ball a little bit more and get the other guys involved. Mm -hmm. And I think they can really battle with the Lakers, definitely. All right, 1-1 one, one on the series, and it looks like this one will go down the wire. And talking about the NBA, they've been able to handle the situation so far and fight off COVID-19 now from the start till dates. Now, great job from the organizers and the medics in the bubble. They they had everything under control. Mm -hmm. Unlike football, uh, there are times you get to see one or two players testing positive since the restart of other sports. Right. But the NBA from the restart till now, we've not had any issues of COVID-19 in the bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's just state that they spent about $150 million yeah. to make that happen. I mean, they really put the precautions in place, daily testing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you leave the bubble, you have to quarantine for 10 days. Um, face masks, social distancing, a lot of um, sanitizing of yeah. facilities and things. So I think they've put a lot of money in place to make sure that the players are safe and anyone coming into the bubble goes through the precautions. And I like how in the beginning when they were playing the playing games, when some of the players broke the rules, they made sure that they made an example and a statement you know, about that. So I think players are a little bit more cautious about how they're moving and mm -hmm. behavior and, and people are just taking precautions. And I commend the MB, um, NBA for putting in that money, making it work yeah. and keeping the players safe. And no one has tested da daily testing and, you know, making sure the players are healthy and that they're safe. Mm, true. And of, uh, for the female side, talking about the WNBA, they are in the wobble and precautions too have been taken and they're also safe as well. Yes, they're playing in uh, Walt Disney. Um, the little kid in me always wishes to see um, Mickey Mouse just popping on the basketball court <laughs> and all that. But we saw, we saw a video of Mickey Mouse and uh, of course, uh, it's quite great seeing them play in that part of the world. And the NBA, great job, I must say, that they've done so far. And I just hope that other sports can um, take heed and learn from what the NBA has done to ensure that sports goes seamlessly in that part. And uh, quickly before we go, what's your thoughts on um, Steve Nash coming back to basketball and being a coach? That's, 
I think we're all we. No one saw that. That was definitely exactly. out of I left field. <laughs> um, and then that team, you know, you have a uh, very star players on that team. Mm -hmm. You know, the Brooklyn Nets, and just having him come in and be the head coach. Um, I mean, he was a great player, and you can see when he played, he was a, a leader. Yeah. Um, I I didn't know he had that coaching experience mm -hmm. uh, on that level, but I mean, you can never, sometimes the flukes become the greatest stories, sure. right? So I think you can't really count him out, um, but I, it'll be interesting to see what the Nets will, will do next year, you know, right. with him leading, leading the ship. Mm, true. I actually thought it was going to take charge of um, the Lakers, but yeah, he's taking over the Brooklyn Nets, and let's see if he can actually lead them to a championship. It might be too tough, uh, too early to call, but it's something that would be great for Steve Nash if he gets to win something with the Brooklyn Nets and the sports back here in Nigeria. We're all looking forward to the restart of sports, especially the game of basketball. Most of the basketball yeah. players are yearning for basketball action and it's still not happening. And I, I learned uh, one of the basketball players I met over the weekend said he would love to play in something that looks like the bubble. And I'm wondering, can that ever happen in Nigeria here? Yeah. I actually know bubble. someone who's trying to create that, mm. um, like a tournament, oh, yeah. and the doing the NBA bubble style play. Um, I don't know. They're trying to get it together for later this year. It'll be interesting to see, you know, if they mm. can pull it off. But I think right. it's a good concept. All right. Uh, let's see how that goes for sports in Nigeria, especially the world of basketball. But as always, I'd like to thank you for coming back. And uh, I said this is your debut post-covid <laughs> post-covid yeah. yes it is you yeah. know we've been doing the video calls yeah. and um but it's it's good to be back and i'm All right, to it's be good back. to have maka ayamu back on the <laughs> show with us and that's much we can take today on plus sports and plus tv africa on behalf of okwe adebara say thank you very much and also to the production team i say thank you very much uh, for having a great show keep it locked down to plus tv africa because we give you the best when it comes to tv program remember the big stories live here